Howdy folks, and welcome back to Hilda. Today we're gonna to be watching season two, episode four, which is titled The Eternal Warriors. And I don't always show deference to the uh, little whiteboard joke that I, I write every episode, but uh, it's kind of weird that we haven't got uh, David really featured. I realize now here we're gonna be about a third of the way through the season, and we've only had like two lines from the guy, maybe? in like episode one. Uh, it's been a while since we've checked in with him and especially since last time we got a full on Frida episode. I'm thinking David might have his due, but with the title of the Eternal Warriors, that sounds about as far away from David as you can get. Uh, so interested to see what we have here, uh, but I hope we get justice for my boy soon because I do kind of miss him. Yes, it's nice that we've had, you know, the woodman and the librarian get, uh, you know, episodes where they get to be, you know, part of the main group basically and go on an adventure with Hilda uh, as they are two of my favorite side characters. Uh, but I miss David. Uh, I miss him and uh, he, you know, honestly, a lot of his bits are oftentimes uh, some of the more entertaining, some of the funnier ones. I really like the fact that there's always a bug on him joke. He's just a funny little guy and uh, you know, I miss him when he's not here. Uh, and he's, he's really the only character that's really been absent. Once again, I hope we get him, but is he an eternal warrior? Probably not, uh, but only time will tell. Uh, but yeah, I've been loving season two so far. Uh, wouldn't surprise me also if we get a little more of uh, Eric Alpert, I think his name is. Uh, he's He was absent in the last one. We got him a little bit in episode two, but I, it wouldn't surprise me if we saw him at least for one little scene here in this one. Um, yeah, that's all my predictions really. Uh, I'm kind of hoping it's not another Alpha kind of episode. Like we had the lost clan I think it was and it was like a whole a whole big battle thing about to happen with them and and uh, you know I was making all the jokes about Alpha like oh he's he ain't gonna be the one fighting uh, so I'm kind of hoping here that Alpha doesn't have to do some kind of gladiatorial combat with with some other elven warrior clan of some kind remains to be seen like I said so let's scooch over here as I take this opportunity to uh, thank you for watching this video. Leave a like on this video if you haven't done so yet. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well so you see when more of these come out. My tea for today is, oh boy, my mug just somehow stuck to the little coaster. That was weird. Uh, it's, it's fine now, but, but it's some sleepy time tea. So as always, if nothing else in the comments, what are you drinking while you watch this one? Uh, if you want to see this or any other of my reactions uncut and early, uh, there's a link to the Patreon in the description of this video, as well as a link to my Discord to join up on my server to talk about this or any of the other shows that I cover on the channel. With all that being said, a uh, reasonably short intro this time, uh, let us get going with uh, Hilda Season 2, Episode 4, The Eternal Warriors, starting up in 3, 2, 1, go. Oh, that might be what we're getting. I think I called this out last time, but two characters kind of shooting energy at each other. Um, maybe that's what we're going to get here today. Maybe that's the call out to the Eternal Warriors in the intro here. I like that shot. It's almost a Stonehenge looking arch there. I've been to Stonehenge. It was my favorite part of my trip to England. My favorite touristy thing that I saw. I was gonna say, what's this epic sax music doing in Hilda? So much, hey, there's the boy. I got it right, we are getting a David episode. Yo, that was me on the school bus in middle school though. What are you listening to? Just some popular music. Oh, just my Creed mixtape. I don't know why he sounds more Scottish when I do his voice. It's my first time camping outside the wall. What if we run into trolls? Oh. You brought a stowaway? It's a three-day trip. I couldn't leave him in the flat that long. <laughs> My mom can't take care of him too well. She keeps forgetting to feed him. Interesting that we're getting another camping episode so soon after the, the season one finale. Right? Happy backpacking. Uh, that doesn't look like the recommended course. <laughs> this way, we can go and see the screaming stones. Huh? There's also some geocaches on the way I wanted to pick up. Mysterious pile of stones that, well... Scream. How do you know they're not trolls? Trolls don't come anywhere near these woods. Yeah, also they don't scream during the day, idiot. So you want to go and see something that even trolls are afraid of? Oh, don't be scared. It'll be fun. Yeah, isn't that what he said, though, that they always end up doing? 
One of them said that in the last season that, uh, oh, Hilda, you were always dragging us into danger saying like, oh, let's do it. Uh, but it's utterly horrifying and we didn't sign up for this. And now here's Frida saying the same thing to David, right? So I don't want to say that's a little character inconsistency, but it's certainly something I've noticed. I don't know if that's just where they are in their friendship now that, you know, Hilda and Frida, especially after the last episode, you know, Frida might have gotten a little bit of a morale boost for, uh, you know, a little bit of direction in her life, stuff she might be good at. Uh, so she might be all for this adventure and stuff because she's like, at the very least, maybe I know a single spell that I can pull out and I uh, use to help us. Who knows? That's when I cross has to build the campfire. <laughs> oh, Dave. Oh, that's the screaming David, not the screaming stones. We can make that, right? Definitely. I don't think so. Come on, David. He's going down uh, Wile E. Coyote style. My legs won't work. Oh. I think they're a bit tired from all the fun we've been having. Yo, can't okay. you just go around? Isn't there a little... It's okay. We can take the long way around. Okay, yeah. See, there you go. Should've just done that in the first place, Hilda. Because no matter how athletic you are, that still is quite dangerous. Yeah, that little river was really shallow, and you're not going to really get hurt if you fall in just a little wet. Look, but that... Those must be the screaming That stuff. crevice? Nah. I don't hear them. It's getting dark. We better make camp. You're right. I thought we'd reach the stones today. I guess we did take the long way. Oof. Ouch. Oh no, don't tell me he's going to try to prove himself in the middle of the night saying like, I can prove that I'm that I'm good at this. I'm going to go by myself. Jorts, Jorts sighted. Telling scary stories? Come on in. Jorts and Bloops. Yo, they got the whole gang over there. I'm going to um get another log for the fire. Yo, the Mara's just sitting there waiting for him to go to sleep like he oh, he's going to have some juicy nightmares tonight. How much battery you got in that thing? What? I like light rock. Okay, um, I just did hear somebody scream, but I, I mentioned earlier that was me on the school bus. Uh, when I was in middle school, everyone had those CD players, man. And uh, like in your backpack, you always made sure to have your CD player and your headphones, as well as your little your little CD like booklet of just like all your stuff. Because back in my day, you 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 Gen Zers, all of you. <laughs> Gen Sears who don't watch my channel. Um, no, I think my uh, my highest demographic is like, uh, I think the 24-ish one. Uh, I forget. It's been a while since I've checked. Um, but uh, in middle school, you always, everyone had their CD players and their little CD books. And you sit there and, and like I had a friend on my bus who, she had the cool stuff. I had not a lot in middle school just a couple things here and there not too many cds a friend of mine burned me some lincoln park albums a hybrid theory and meteora uh, and then i had a couple of mix cds that did contain a lot of creed go watch my creed video essay where i talk about creed for two hours and 15 minutes uh, but i made like you know little mix cds with just kind of whatever my dad had but my friend maria she had System of a Down Toxicity. She had the Ma Marshall Mathers EP. She had she had a lot of cool stuff that I, number one, didn't really know about before I started going to middle school. And number two, like, probably wouldn't be allowed to listen to anyway. So I always made sure to borrow, like, the cool stuff from her. Um, even though I wasn't, like, super into metal, like, Toxicity just, like, blew my mind, man. 10 out of 10 albums still to this day uh, by System of a Down. Um, but yeah, that was, that was me just like headphones in. And then when I got into eighth grade, a friend of mine showed me Pink Floyd. And then at that point it was all over for me. I got the, I got the classic rock bug, so to speak. And I was just like, was buying all, all these classic albums, everything I could find, especially Pink Floyd. Like for a while, they were far and away my favorite band and just sitting on the bus, listening to like dark side of the moon or metal or the wall or any of those albums, just like, and just seeing David here just mm, brings me back to that. That and Creed, like I said. Go watch my Creed video. Anyway, let's get back to it. This rock is just too light. I'll have to go a little further away. <laughs> you should listen to some heavier stuff. Have you tried Toxicity by System of a Down, David? Why can't I it's a banger of an exam? album. Hmm. He is going to go do it, isn't no, he? I can be brave. Yep. Who's afraid? Not me. 
Oh, 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 he fallen. No. Frida was sitting there laughing. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, my boy's out. He was found by the Eternal Warriors who said, Hey, I liked your light rock. Well, that's a large fella. Vikings? Yes! Fear not, young one. Also, that did count as an oracle moment, saying that David was going to go off on his own. Are you Vikings? Yes! My name is Torgal, warrior of thunder. You know, you're kind of far away from the ocean. I could use a battlefield messenger. <laughs> right. Turning down a chance to show bravery in battle? Sorry, it's just... Not very good at battle, this one. Is. Seeking the legendary... Medallion of Sigur. Ooh. They say, all who touch it fear nothing for the rest of their days. No, that's, that's, I think that's a bad idea, actually. Because, so what are you going to do? There's a big difference between, like, you know, cowardice and, like, wisdom, right? Uh, yes, there's, there's a thing for being brave and stuff, but sometimes... You gotta know when to fold them, as the saying goes. Uh, there's certainly situations where just a little bit of, of wisdom and, and street smarts would be, be like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I shouldn't be in this situation. Maybe I should do everything I can to get the fuck out. Uh, so, but it sounds like if you touch this medallion, might cloud that judgment up there. And uh, you know what? I wouldn't do it. I would not do it. Uh, I, I consider myself, you know, of average bravery, potentially. Um, I've never been in a fight, actually, in my life. Uh, I have no idea how I would actually fare in one uh, if I had to be in a fight. Um, but you know what? I would not touch the. I would not touch the the cursed Uroboros-looking world snake, world serpent uh, bravery charm. Would not do it. Would you do it, dear viewer? Because I wouldn't. Slay every last one of them. <laughs> Oh, not much for slaying. A battlefield messenger you shall be. Soon your troubles will be over. A messenger to deliver a message to our enemies saying, Oh, we are going to come and k k kill you? And then they just murk David dead. Yes! Have to touch that medallion. This prize has freed us from fear. And now we shall bring it home to do the same for our countrymen. Yeah. Okay, so it's real. So these people just be out here. I didn't hear exactly how far they said they rode the bus out there. Ooh. Hargund? Magic sword. Son. Magic axes and kukri and whatever else they have. It wasn't kukri. It looked kind of like, uh, what's her name? Who's the ninja girl from Final Fantasy VII? It'll come to me. Oh. Yuffie. Shouts before now you have less than none yeah cuz they fight as people possessed of no fear I do love the kind of color coding on all the weapons though makes it easier to see who's who I see I kind of like Yuffie's weapon kind of like Axel's weapon from uh, Kingdom Hearts oh I'm confused here are they just like are these magical weapons and they could just kind of like magic their limbs back together to where this battle just kind of has no stakes? I guess we'll find out. All right, now this is kind of cool. I got something to say after this little sequence. This is, I love the animation here. Oh, put it back on, put it back on, headphones. Headphones back on. Okay. Uh, I first of all, that scene was animated really well. I really enjoyed the uh, like him running straight towards the straight towards the camera while everything was happening kind of behind him as he was running. I really wanted a moment where after he got knocked down, the headphones fell off. He got up and after a couple steps, put them back on and the music kicked back in. That would have been tight. That would have been a nice little touch of what we the audience hear exactly what the character is hearing and that 
I don't know. I, I love when films do things like that. Films and shows do things like that. I need to scooch back over just a hair, I think. Um, shoot, what was I going to say? I had another thing I wanted to say. Oh, uh, musical stingers like that. Uh, we've been slowly rewatching uh, uh, Stranger Things on Netflix, another Netflix property like Hilda. And uh, they, I noticed that in starting in like season three, I think it was, they got really egregious with the musical drops. Like any 80s song they could get the license to, they're dropping in here and there at like just different parts in the story and everything. So after being just inundated with those in that show, it's kind of nice to see a show like this where they're used kind of sparingly, right? Like, it's not like they're dropping a song every, like, 30 seconds or something in here. It's just, you know, oftentimes there is a song featured in an episode, but it's not really used in the way, like, kind of like this, like, in an action scene or when something's actually going on, where the music kind of, like, overpowers everything else that's happening. Getting a little sick of it with Stranger Things, not gonna lie. Uh, especially when the original score itself of the show is so good, the really synth heavy kind of stuff. Um, yeah, they kind of rely a little too much on the, the eighties music, but you know what? I'll take it here. It fit a lot better here. Okay. So I'm willing, I'm willing to bet that it's the power of the medallion. Oh, that guy just got cleft in twain. Oh, okay. They didn't show us. Utterly horrifying, though, for David. Oh, jeez. Look at all those fucking limbs on the ground. My goodness. This is what we have fought for. The gift that will free us from the bonds of fear. But now who else is there this to is fight? Chance, messenger boy. He did reach out and touch it there, didn't he? Ooh, David's going to be a changed man. He's just, oh, look at him. I was like, ready for like, Super David. Now, is it actually the effects of it or is it like a placebo effect kind of thing? Oh, good job, David. You're not afraid of grass. I mean, he might have been before. Who knows? See, that's unwise. You don't know how deep it is there. You could break your fucking neck. Ooh, look at that shot, though, with his hair, like, down like that. It's a good look for him. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You know, still a very great voice, but I could do without the, uh, theatrics. There they are. Okay, so we still don't know what the actual mystery of the stones is. I don't hear any screaming. I thought it was going to be based on the, uh... Like, the battles that happen in the area between these two clans. And that's, you know, the screams from the battle are what people heard and attributed it to the stones. Yeah, see, David. There's a big difference between being brave and being stupid. So what the hell? Why not just beat it out of him? David, what's the matter with you? You've been acting, well, different. Yeah, I'm fearless now. So, <laughs> explain. Hearing that come I out of his mouth is... Field of you know what it is? He hasn't had a single bug on him this whole episode. And it took away all our fear. Yo, someone playing Monster what Hunter over in the distance? It was not that. There haven't been Vikings around here for hundreds of years. Maybe me. they were ghosts. The broken bodies of our vanquished foes. Oh. Okay, so they're real. Everyone on my side survived. Is he putting them back together? What is he doing? Interesting. Yeah, so it is the two clans just forever going at it with each other, right? They got the medallion! How dare those ingrates come back to life? This is interesting. The title makes sense now. The Eternal Warriors. They fight. Mudman brings them back. They fight again. That means their side's probably going to lose tonight, right? Oh, God. It's it's like a different take on the Sisyphus myth. God, this is so interesting now. Now that I kind of understand what's happening here, just kind of thinking of the logistics of everything is like, ooh, this is really neat. This is going to have to end with them smashing the medallion, right? 
Ooh. That was a cool shot. And now it's a slaughter. It's a fucking massacre at this point, isn't it? Yeah, Hilda's gonna smash this MF medallion by the end of it, isn't she? Damn, he didn't fear that. Yo, if David dies in this episode, it gets... That's what I said. Yep. I don't always agree with Hilda and the points she makes and the things she does in these episodes, but I'm 100% team. Yo, my boy just got decapitated. Yo, that's insane. Literally one of the main characters just got beheaded. It's Sigurd. You wouldn't like it if I called you flesh girl. <laughs> Touche. Are you saying they slay each other every night? How long has this been going on? What's the difference? Feels like forever. And it's gonna be forever and unless someone does anything, them? right? I'm not saving them. I'm getting back at them. Those Vikings stole my medallion from me. So I've been making them fight for it over and over again. If that battle we heard happens every night, then it was never the stone screaming. That's what I said. Oh, okay, that that's a, the stones, the swamp. I'll call that Oracle moment number two. Uh, and I am going to pause right here because he said my name is Sigurd. And I was like, that name sounds so familiar. Why do I know that? It's because that's his medallion. He said as much, but it, it took me until he said that to actually piece it together that that's what the title of the medallion was. Um, oh, God, this in, this episode is just so interesting, man. I love this. Can't you take the medallion back? What would I want with that old thing? It makes you an idiot. Besides, isn't it hilarious? I don't need the extra bother. Wait, how do I get David's fear back? The effects of the medallion only last until death. So you're in luck. Oh. Oh, that makes sense. That's why the side that is fighting oh, for it is like, we've got to do it so we can have it. You know, if it lingered after death, it wouldn't make sense for them to... <gasps> continually be needing it right oh, it worked. what's going on <laughs> oh they put on back oh my god they put his head on backwards jeez louise <laughs> try again the face goes in the front not that hard oh my god okay that that was incredible the last thing i remember was leaving your tent and falling down the mountain I'm such a pain. Yo, david just straight up not died Twice Sorry, in this episode. That's insane. You've been using this to revive us and our enemies to make us fight endlessly. That is one solid gag. <laughs> that is a, that is a pretty Thank good you. gag. See, they appreciate it. <laughs> Literally, what's what's the phrase? A fate worse than death. Meat. Try the meat. <laughs> My God, that they could get away with this shit. I mean, I know it's Netflix, so it's. Maybe less stuff they have to deal with for, like, advertisers and all that kind of stuff. But, like, there have been multiple on-screen. No, thanks. I think David's been killed enough for one day. Also, how much of the juice do they have? Oh, does he not remember? Oh, yo, that's the end of the episode. I was not ready for that to be over. I don't know why. It felt like we still had another, like, act to go. Uh, I thought there was going to be more, uh more stuff going on with the uh with them uh that's why i was like still pausing like up until the end i was still just like oh let me stop to talk about this but um yeah that one was so interesting uh i brought up the sisyphus myth but it really uh really reminds me of that kind of this endless futile struggle and now i guess they're just playing for fun now at this point uh i don't know how much of the how much of the magic juice they have i think i've I think I've quoted this old cartoon in another video. I'll have to see if I can find the little clip to put it in here. But uh, uh, King Size Canary, when they have the, like the magical growing juice, and they're just like the cat and the mouse and everything, or and the bird are just like using it to grow bigger and bigger until they're standing literally towering above the earth and the thing's empty, and it just ends with them going, "Ladies and gentlemen, we gotta end this here picture. We just ran out of the stuff," and just like drop it. That's the end. That's how it ends. No solution or everything. It's just, well, we're just two literal giants towering above the world itself with our heads sticking out into space, like waving goodbye to the camera, which is also in space. Um, but I said all that to say, what happens when they just straight up run out of the stuff, right? Like, obviously, 
Sigurd said he's been doing it for hundreds of years or feels like forever, right? Um, I don't know. How much longer can they go? Does he make it? I'm curious as to what this, this magical elixir is. Uh, but uh, you know what? Maybe a question for another day. Uh, that was a really fun episode. It was one of those ones that, like, it was fine, but it... it built and built as it went uh and once kind of all the pieces got put into place uh it you know it was really interesting like i said i honestly thought with you know like i said it felt like there's another act to go i thought they were gonna fight for it again and you know maybe maybe everyone gets their hands on it and they're all like crazed or whatever and then like hilda or david or somebody has to smash the medallion to say like look no more of this uh this, this thing's destroying you, literally, even though it's not cr really creating a permanent effect, literally destroying you. Look at yourselves, um, which I think would have been a, a cool ending. And they, especially if David, you know, they heal David, everyone but him touches it, so they're all like crazed or whatever. Then it's up to David to smash it, say like, I don't need this, I'm, I'm fine just the way I am, right? And he then learns his lesson that way. Um, yeah, other than that though, like really, really fun episode. I like that one a lot. That's... I honestly think I enjoyed this one more than the witch one. And I was really high in that witch episode just because, like, I like the characters involved. I like the story. I like the magical aspect of it. This had more of that magical aspect, but I think it was also just more shocking in general seeing so much on screen death. You know, like I said, they don't, they probably have a, a smaller, uh, 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 What's the department I'm trying to think of that Alex Hirsch always complained about for Gravity Falls? Uh, whatever that department is that has to censor and like say, oh, you got to change that. You can't have that in the episode. It's probably a little bit smaller for Netflix being a streaming platform. They don't have like the traditional advertising route that the TV networks have like Cartoon Network, Disney Channel, all those. So, you know, they can get away with it a little bit better. And it was you know, still shocking to see for a, a show that's normally so tame, so child friendly most of the time. I don't know. It was good stuff. I liked it a lot. Uh, might be my favorite of the season so far. I don't know. I I, I don't remember offhand what to. No, that was the Woodman episode, which was also really good. I don't know. I'll have to sit and think about it because you know recency bias. I just finished watching it, but you know what my thoughts are. Damn good episode. Liked it a lot. Uh, but I would like to hear what you think about the episode. So now that I'm done talking, if you haven't left a comment let yet, leave a, leave one. Let me know what you thought of this episode, of the reaction, anything you want to tell me. I'll catch you next time with some more Hilda. Take it easy, everybody.